The list of symptoms for COVID-19 is growing. Thank you for staying with us. I'm Alan Campbell. And I'm Glenda Lewis. The CDC has added several new signs that could indicate you may have the coronavirus. Our chief health editor, Dr. Partha Nandy, joins us now to tell us what they are. Good Friday afternoon to you, Doc. Hey, Friday afternoon to you, Glenda. Yeah, there's now at least 11 symptoms uh, listed on the CDC's website, uh, Glenda and Allen. And the most recent ones that were added include congestion or runny nose, nausea or vomiting, and diarrhea. And just to refresh everyone's memory, remember the other symptoms on the list include fevers or chills, cough, shortness of breath, or difficulty breathing, fatigue, muscle or body aches, headache, as well as new loss of taste or smell and sore throat. So it's a, a, a you know it's a long list, and unfortunately, it could continue to grow as we learn more about this uh, this coronavirus. Yeah, that list is definitely growing for sure, Doc. So a small CDC survey found almost all patients with COVID-19 had one of three key symptoms. What are they? Yeah, it's a super important, uh, Alan. And 164 people were surveyed and asked what their symptoms were when they had COVID-19. And get this, 96% of them said they had one of the following. Number one, a fever, cough, or shortness of breath. And 45% of them said they had all three of these symptoms. Now, if you could break it down even further, which of those symptoms were the most common? Well, 84% said um, that they had a cough and 80% had a fever. As for shortness of breath, uh, breath get this, 82% of people who were hospitalized said they had it compared to just 38% of people surveyed who did not have to be hospitalized, uh, meaning they were probably not as severe. And Doc, many of those symptoms could be associated with flu or cold or stomach flu, any of those things. Exactly. But the exactly. CDC, yeah, scary. Recently adding some emergency warning signs. So can you tell us what those are? Yeah, in addition to all those, uh, those symptoms and signs I talked about, these are the emergency warning signs. And they say this is what to look out for. Trouble breathing, persistent pain or pressure in the chest, new episode or new areas, uh, I, I, new times that you're having confusion, uh, inability to, to wake or stay awake, and then a bluish, bluish lips or face. All those are concerning. And so not, this doesn't cover everything that, that people can have. We know that some people actually may have trouble speaking or problems with their sight. Or maybe you feel foggy or not, you're not thinking quite as sharply uh, as you normally would. The main point here is that you seek out medical help for any symptoms you feel that severe or worrying to you. Because if you wait, it could be too late. You want to get medical help quickly. Yeah, it's so important to go see the doctor right away. So, Dr. Nandy, you know, we're hearing about some very scary complications like blood clots and amputations. Are, are these common? So, Alan, complications can develop, and, if, and sadly for some people, it can literally cost them an, an arm and, or a leg, for example. Amputations can happen due to lack of oxygen, lack of blood flow, and problems with blood pressure. And as you mentioned, some people are having strokes and uh, issues with blood clots, even young folks. And thankfully, uh, th these serious complications are not very common. But it just tells us the importance of continuing to stay vigilant, listening to stated national officials, you know, again, Cover up your face, right? Get a face mask, social distance, sanitize areas that are common. It's mm -hmm. so important. It's basic, but it's so important. We can prevent this disease and, and do what many other countries around the world have, which is control it. We can do it here in the United States as well. Thank you for that, Dr. Nandy. My pleasure. And don't forget, you can watch Dr. Nandy on Sunday at 1 p.m. right here on 7. This week, Dr. Nandy takes a closer look at whether all men should be screened for prostate cancer.